So I was asked to talk about devices for congenital heart disease. So first I'd like to ask um, who in here is a parent of a hero with congenital heart disease? Okay, and who in here actually has congenital heart disease? Okay, then the last question is who has a device in their heart? or their child has a device in their heart. All right, so there's a lot of devices, all right, and it kind of gets broken down into electrical and plumbing, all right? And I'm a plumber, so <laughs> no questions about electricity. I don't know anything about pacemakers or arrhythmia. I know a little, a little bit about it, but I'm a plumber. And um, we may seem like a small team, but we're a pretty tight team. I have sent patients to Chicago for Dr. Mavrubis to do a, a Fontan conversion on, an adult patient that he did a great job with. And I have called Dr. Rychek multiple times about patients with protein losing neuropathy and how to manage them. So uh, we work well together as a team. So a little bit about devices. Uh, what I thought I would do is just focus on devices that are FDA approved. Um, that is kind of not the way it works in congenital heart disease because 90% of what we do is not FDA approved. And when Cheryl was going through what she was going through, uh, it was physicians coming up with what to do without really an FDA approval for the indication of what they're doing. Um, even when I started this in 1996, the only thing FDA approved was a balloon to pop a hole in your heart when you have transposition. We still do the exact same procedure. I did it last week um, on a 25-weeker. And uh, it, it's the exact same technique that was described in the 60s. And there's been very much a growth in devices getting FDA approved. And as parents, you probably don't have any way of understanding really how much goes into that from the physician side and from the company side. Um, on average, it takes seven years to get something FDA approved for a child. And then once you do get it approved, it's not over. You have to do the post-approval study and five years later, you have to present to the FDA to make sure there's not any unforeseen things happening with that device um, after the approval that didn't happen during the trial. So I'm going to go over just a few of the devices that are approved. I'm going to tell you some of the trials that are ongoing, and hopefully will be. these are things that will be approved very soon. They've been ongoing for more than seven years. And then some new technologies that St. Jude has developed. Most of you already know what a cardiac cath is, but occasionally people get it confused. And so just to make sure that we're clear, if you had a choice to have your heart repaired, would you choose a cath or surgery? Raise your hand if you choose cath. Okay, so then everyone knows what a cath is, right? <laughs> so the other thing about cath is uh, you're asleep. So like, like the sonographer, that you can't look at us with a grimacing face because we, you're asleep. So uh, we have to talk to you afterwards and explain everything that happened. Um, it usually takes about two or three hours. Um, I always say an hour, but my nurse tries to correct me and tell me, tell them three, tell them three, because I'll be waiting. Um, but it, it takes about one to three hours to do a procedure, and usually patients today go home the same day. Um, we do keep a few patients overnight that may require monitoring because of the size of the sheath, um, or maybe antibiotics because of risk for infection, but for the most part, patients go often home within about four to six hours of the procedure. So. I broke these two things into two categories. There are more devices than this that are FDA approved, not by many. And uh, I've been involved in almost all of these devices during the clinical trial, and I use all these devices regularly. The top section, which is almost half or more than half of the devices out there, were developed by St. Jude Medical. So that gives you perspective of how much St. Jude Medical really focuses on children and the development of device technology for children. And I have to tell you that that takes a lot for a company to do that. I've been out to, to Austin, Texas to talk to them about technologies that they have upcoming. And there's not as much money in that, all right? They can develop something for the adult population and make a whole lot more money than they can develop in it for children. So they take on that mission knowing that it's not as financially viable. And that's very important. Um, of those devices, they've been around for a long time. The Amplatzer ASD occluder was approved in 2002. I've been using it since then at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, the year that it came approved. The Cribriform device is a device that closes the holes in the heart that look like a piece of Swiss cheese. So you have a device that closes a big hole, the Amplatzer device from four millimeters to 36 millimeter holes, and then you have the Cribriform that'll close a Swiss cheese type hole with a smaller centerpiece. We have the Amplatzer uh, VSD device, and 
just to tell you a little perspective, about two weeks ago, beautiful little 24-year-old, little, she is little, she's not young, I guess, but she is little, um, who had Tetralogy of Flow and had a patch leak similar to Charlie and uh, had had four operations, and two of those operations were attempts to close that patch, and they couldn't close it, and she was not well from that patch leak. Um, she was doing okay, but couldn't work, couldn't go to school, and uh, we took her to the lab, and we used the St. Jude Amplatzer muscular VST device, and through her aorta backwards, we closed that hole in the cath lab, and she is ecstatic, to say the least. And so there is some pretty neat stories like that we could go on all day. Uh, the Amplatzer PDA occluder also was FDA approved. Um, there's two versions of it, two different shapes. And that closes the little blood vessel between the upper chambers of the heart. And not as many of you will have that. A lot of children that have that, that's all they have. And it's not as often that they uh, think of it as congenital heart disease because once we fix it, they're fixed. And they don't have anything else for pretty much the rest of their lives. And then the vascular plugs, we've done a tremendous amount of work in that with pulmonary AV malformations coronary fistulas, things like that. So then there are some other companies out there that have done some great work. Um, W.L. Gore and Associates, uh, they have a device that no longer is available. Okay, that, I've been involved with that device since 1999 and has worked extremely well to close holes in the heart, ASDs. But that particular device now has a new version of the car, shall we say. The Gore Cardioform Septal Occluder just reached FDA occluder, is not even market available yet. And in the next three months, the Gore Helix Septal Occluder will no longer be available. It's no longer available in Canada or Europe. And uh, the Gore Cardioform is going to replace that device as a newer, newer model device. The Night Occlude, made by uh, Bard, is a great device also for PDAs for different shapes. And the cutting balloon, I was involved in that from the very, very beginning. In 1999, I wrote a protocol for six patients to use a cutting balloon to open up branch pulmonary arteries. And unfortunately, in those patients with really bad branch pulmonary arteries that are really tight, uh, they will not open with regular balloons. You can go to very, very high pressure and they won't open. But these little cutting balloons that were made for coronary arteries, the adult doctors were using it to open up coronary artery plaques we took the balloons and we put them in the pulmonary arteries and we showed that they could open the blood vessels and then you could come back and push with another balloon and you could actually get blood vessels open that otherwise weren't going to open. And uh, Boston Children's led a multi-center trial and it reached FDA approval about five years ago. And then the Melody Valve, which is named because it's a musical valve, um, that was Bonhoeffer and his group from England and then it went through the clinical trials in the U.S. and that valve has changed what we do for children with Tetralogy of Fallot and outflow tract reconstruction because we're able to actually revise their pulmonary valve with a new pulmonary valve in the cath lab. And you guys rose, raised your hand that you prefer cath, so I know that that's a good thing. So this is just a picture of a hole in the upper chambers of the heart. That's just called the Amplatzer septal occluder. And that's kind of what it looks like when it sits in the hole. And then we also have the PDA device, and it just shows you that the, the connection is between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. The PDA device looks just like a bathroom plug that you put in the bathtub. And then there's the VSD device, the holes in the lower chambers of the heart. And it's the same kind of design, but it's a little bit different length and a little different mechanism to close those holes. And this is sort of an array of what the devices look like. The one thing they have in common, which is what transcended uh, medical care with transcatheter techniques is they're made of nickel titanium, which you pronounce nitinol. I'm from North Carolina, so when I first saw it, I called it nitinol, but now I've learned that it's nitinol. But uh, nitinol is nickel titanium, and nitinol has shape memory. So once that hit the medical device market, you could take anything and make it any shape you want, and then pull it down into a catheter straight and linear, Put it in, and when you put it out of the catheter, it went back to its shape that it's supposed to be, and it didn't distort its shape. So once we had a metal with shape memory, it totally changed what we could do in medicine. And this is just to show you all the different device locations that uh, Amplatzer St. Jude has come up with. So some of the other FDA-approved devices from other companies, this is the Gore Helix Septo Occluder. That device is no longer going to be available, and this is what the new device looks like, the Gore Cardioform. It's slightly different. Um, design, 
Uh, we just finished the clinical trial. I was the first person to put it in in the U.S. That was an exciting day um, about four or five years ago. Uh, this particular device is made of Gore-Tex, and the metal frame is a little more of a flower shape rather than a circular shape, so it's less likely to break. And the frame is actually thinner, so it's even less frame. It's mostly all Gore-Tex covering, and the device is really almost completely covered by Gore-Tex. It works very well for ASD. The Nidoclue device, um, which came from uh, uh, clinical trials and reached FDA approval, and they're actually starting a clinical trial with the Nidoclude for VSD as well, and we're hoping that it will answer the membranous VSDs that often we see and we can't treat without an operation. And uh, that particular device uh, works extremely well for PDA. The, the picture on the left on the left shows the connection between the, between the two, uh, between the aorta and the pulmonary artery, and then after the nitoclude device is in, there's no or any connection between the two. This is the cutting balloon. People always say, well, my goodness, you're gonna put a blade in my child's heart. We don't like to put a blade on anybody's heart. Um, it is thinner than a razor blade, okay? And you can actually blow the balloon up in your fingers, it won't cut your fingers through the glove. It's very, very um, small blade, all right? But if it goes in something really resistant, like if you really pushed really hard and you tried to push on your fingers, if you had something that was resistant, it will break that resistance. So it breaks less than a millimeter of the wall, but that is enough to loosen the wall so that then when you come back with the bigger balloon, it, it will open, just like that, okay? The Medtronic Melody Valve, I've done uh, two of these in the last week. Uh, we, we do a lot of these now. And uh, it's just become a wonderful opportunity uh, to fix patients' hearts. Um, the, uh, more than 4,000, almost 5,000 children are born every year with right ventricular alpha tract obstruction in the United States. And they're going to need surgeries by Dr. Mavruvis and others to fix the right ventricle and sort of get the blood to the lungs. And then on average, by age 21, those patients have had at least three operations on average. So some of them had five and some have had one or two, but on average, three operations by the time they're out of college. Uh, by having this technology, we're able to, to, to knock that down significantly, uh, maybe even only end up with just one operation if we really plan it the right way with our surgeon from the very beginning. This is an example of a picture of a RV outflow tract where the blood is not supposed to go backwards into the ventricle. It's supposed to only be in the pulmonary artery. So this is the pulmonary artery. You see all the lung vessels. And it's not supposed to be back here, but this valve isn't working, and it's narrowed quite a bit. And once we put the valve in, the valve is on a stent. It's a bovine uh, jugular vein from a cow, and it works the same as the Contegra graft. And once you put the valve in, now when you inject here, there's no leak backwards, and there's very little to no obstruction out. Those valves have now got good six to eight years in the United States studies of follow-up with excellent results. And from the England studies, uh, they even got 10-year follow-up with very good results. So what's coming out in trials right now that hasn't gotten to FDA approval? We've been doing the COAST 1 and 2 for, it seems like a decade. It may be a decade. Um, that particular problem there is called coarctation of the aorta or obstruction of the main artery in the, in the uh, connects to the body. And when that happens, for years, we've always put stents in there to open that. And we wanted to get a stent that had a Gore-Tex patch covering on it to make it safer. They were using it regularly in Europe. But the FDA said, hey guys, you never got the stent FDA approved. We can't, we can't FDA approve the one with the cover on it if you haven't even done the first part yet. So we had to go back and do Coast 1, which was do what we've done all along for 20 years. 15 years and show that the stent works and then coast 2 is showing that the stent with the covering works and uh, we've got it all through the through the trials and we're just doing follow-up and hopefully it's going to be FDA approved very soon. The Parks trial is the exact same stent but that outflow track that I showed you that we put the melody valve in sometimes when you open those they can tear on the walls and so the covered stent is a better stent to prepare the outflow tract with than a stent that doesn't have a covering around it. So the Parks trial is using a covered stent to prepare the alpha track to then put the valve in. And then the Edwards transcatheter valve is a valve similar to Melody, but slightly larger uh, design, and is currently FDA approved for aortic positions. So mended hearts, many of them may actually have those valves because it's very much being used a lot in aortic valve disease in adults, but in children we're using it with congenital heart disease in the pulmonary position. 
This is an example of a coast one where we put the stent in the aorta. You can see the obstruction in the aorta here and then the stent in the aorta here opening the, the narrowing. This is what the stent looks like. It, this is what the coast stent looks like, inflated and deflated. And then this is it, the same exact stent with the Gore-Tex patch on it, and then it expanded right here. Uh, for the Parks trial, again, these outflow tracts can be very, very difficult to open with, with stents and balloons. And if you get any kind of tear or irregularity to the wall, having a stent with a covering that you prepare it with and keeping that outside of the wall is very important. So we're, we're actually just now in continued access, which is the last phase of the FDA trial for that, that device. And this is the Edwards transcatheter valve. It's approved for aortic, and it is being submitted to the FDA for approval. The study is done, the follow-up's done, the data is very, very good, and I think it's only a matter of time till it'll be approved for pulmonic. This is an example of the Edwards valve. Slightly different design than the Melody. Okay, this is, a, uh, this is a bovine pericardial leaflets rather than the bovine jugular vein, but otherwise it's a similar type uh, procedure. So what are some of the newer technologies uh, St. Jude has come out with? Uh, there's a bunch, but I only picked three because I didn't have so much time to talk to you guys. Uh, the ViewMate Z intracardiac ultrasound I think is very important. Um, the ViewMate is a new way to use intracardiac echo. I've been using intracardiac echo since 2001, and um, I don't do any TEEs or anything during my procedures. I use uh, echo probe through the blood vessel in the leg and go up inside the heart, and it shows me everything I need to tell me exactly where to put the device or what to do. And uh, it's a lot easier on the patient uh, without having to be intubated and without having to have a T probe down for two or three hours in, in their esophagus or their, their feeding tube. Um, the cardio MIMS is something that I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but I'm extremely excited about this technology. Again, it's not approved for kids. It is approved for adults. And it is, uh, this is a nickel titanium wire, same kind of metal that has shape memory. And then it has a transducer on the metal. And in adults, it's now FDA approved to go into the pulmonary arteries and deploy it in one of the branch pulmonary arteries in the back part of the wall. And once you put it in, you calibrate it, you come out, and then they can go anytime they want at their home or come into the clinic, lay on a pad, and it'll tell you what the pressure is in the lungs. And so that could change what we do for Fontans, for, for patients with pulmonary hypertension. In adults, it's approved for heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, or, pulmon or, or heart failure. And so they use it to monitor it at home. They call their doctor and they say, hey, the pressure's up 10. They increase their Lasix or they change their medications instead of going to an urgent care or having to come see the doctor. And it changes, it changed medicine greatly for adults with heart failure. And I've been talking to the company and we've submitted an IRB approval to do a study in, in children uh, with Fontan physiology to try to see whether or not we could actually monitor their mean pressures in their Fontan and maybe even come up with things with what the pressures are during exercise more accurately, um, things like that, and also post-operative management. So we're pretty excited about this technology and it is going way beyond that because this little thing is not the only thing out there that can do this and it's not the only company that has the technology. So it's even gonna be smaller and even more innovative uh, in the near future. And the last one is probably my most exciting one. I don't know how much you guys know, but I saw a lot of people raise their hand that they know what a cardiac cath is. So either your child's been through a cath or you've been through a cath, and that means you've been exposed to radiation. And we do a tremendous amount of work to try to decrease our radiation. I no longer can barely see what's going on in your child's heart because our radiation dose is so low that you can't see the quality of the pixels are really bad, but we have decreased ours down to seven and a half uh, units. So that's very, very low dose fluoro. And we just get used to a little less quality image, but accomplish the same outcome that we need to accomplish with that lower quality image and less radiation exposure. MediGuide technology is going to totally change that. What it has done, it's, it's only in about 30 centers worldwide right now. I hope that's right. I think that's what they told me, about 30. And uh, it's only in a few centers in the United States, and I think only one center where it's being used for children, that's in Salt Lake City. And what they do is they put these pads on the patient and they have this monitor that goes on the II where the, where the x-ray comes from. And once the patient's on the table and under the anesthetic, you take one 30 second, you know, 15 second image 
that tells you exactly where everything is. And from that point forward, you never have to use any more radiation. You can just use that overlay image to move the catheter through the heart and do everything you need to do without any more radiation exposure. And so it can drop, say, an electrophysiology test where you have to have your rhythm. Again, don't ask me anything about rhythm or, ry or electricity. But if you were doing something with electricity and wanted to ask someone about it, this right here, instead of six hours of radiation while they're doing this ablation procedure for your rhythm, it can be 10 minutes of radiation. Um, it can change it tremendously. And in adult medicine, it's being used uh, pretty widely, especially in electrophysiology. Um, there are some applications in what I do as well. Instead of you know, ballooning a, an aortic valve or a pulmonary valve with all these different movements and radiation, I can take one picture, know exactly where it is, move along my wire and move the balloon and do everything and it's extremely accurate. It's like GPS without radiation, right? So I wanted to then just show you, uh, St. Jude gave me a little video. I don't know, you could probably look at this online. I don't know how much you guys have seen it, but to just to give you perspective on how you can pull the device down into a linear form and then put it out and it pops open into its shape. And that's how clean my hands are when I do procedures too. There's no blood. So when you push it out of the catheter, it, it resumes its shape. This is the, not an x-ray, this is an echo. But, uh, it shows you by ultrasound. This is the intracardiac echo that we're talking about. Stabilize the delivery cable and slowly pull back on the delivery sheath to deploy the right disc. So that that's uh, Use TEE or ice to that is sort of how it works, and it can go further. We can get into teaching you exactly how to do it if you'd like, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> so it takes a little bit longer. So I want to show you this video because I I don't know if everyone understands how important it is to thank these companies for doing the work that they do. Hey everyone, uh, I'm George Montalongo, this is Melissa Montalongo, my wife, and this is Sarah, a little girl. Um, she is a twin, and she was born a couple weeks early and had an open PDA. Um, so we actually had it fixed yesterday and we wanted to say thank you, uh, first of all, to Dr. Rhodes and Mandy who's taking the video uh, for doing the procedure and then also to St. Jude's and AGA uh, for all the research and work that you all do, um, especially with the Amplatz or occluder that was actually used for her. Um, and we again wanted to just say thank you and our little girl is a lot better as you see here. Um, yesterday she, uh, she couldn't really hold her head up for more than a couple minutes, um, and all morning she's been uh, holding her head happy. up and having a great time. So thank you, thank and you so um, much. keep doing your work. So that little cute body had a patent ductus arteriosus, but she had a lot of shunt through it, so she was really in a lot of, of heart failure, and the left side of her heart was enlarged, and we closed it, and her heart rate came down about 20 beats per minute, and she got up and started moving around, and they said she was very, very laid back, and now I've made her ADHD, so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you all so much.